Life's too short to drive boring cars. Every single vehicle needs two major components to move it down the road. One is an engine, which we know about. That's the heart of the beast. But the other one is the, how you transfer that power from the engine to the wheels. And that's called the transmission. Well, today I'm going to share with you 10 vehicles that have such a fatal flaw that those transmissions will prevent this vehicle from lasting 60,000 miles. Let's get into it now. Now the first vehicle on our list is similar to what we have behind her. This is a newer version, but a 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now they're well liked because of their versatility and off-road prowess, but unfortunately the transmissions in these Jeeps along with almost every other Chrysler product is an absolute disaster. Here's why. Sure, they're pretty cool looking. You've got your Jeep design with the fancy grill. That's pretty standard stuff. And they've got some pretty cool lights as well as rims. Jeeps always look quite attractive and they're very versatile. They answer the versatility question and functionality for many, many buyers. With the four wheel drive system, sunroof makes it more than just versatile. You've got some great styling and in some cases they even look aggressive. So how is this not a good choice of a vehicle for those looking for that versatile off-road SUV? Well, in short, it's really the transmission, and here's why. In 2014, they came with a 9-speed ZF automatic transmission. It was a little smaller. It weighed about 15 to 20 pounds less than the outgoing model. It was also utilized in the Evoque Range Rover. It was also more compact and provided 16% increase in fuel savings just by its very programming and design. But unfortunately, about 1.1 million of these beasts were recalled because of their failures, many failure rates. From aggressive upshifts, aggressive downshifts, slipping, shuddering through the drivetrain, all from the transmission, axle vibration, random kick down, and one of the more serious issues with this vehicle, upon a customer grabbing the shifter, sliding it over into a position they deemed as park, it wasn't as clear and distinctive, and often people would put it into neutral, not realizing, thinking it was in park, and then they'd get out and the vehicle would start Start rolling away. There's actually cases where somebody was run over and it crushed them against the fence. Sadly enough, this transmission is one of the worst you'll ever find. Is what we have here another fine Chrysler product is the Dodge Journey. Now the Journey isn't too far removed from the Grand Caravan, the Caravans. They all suffer some major transmission failures. Sure these vehicles look relatively versatile, if not slightly basic and bland. They have old school lights, they have low rent rims, no sunroof in many of the models, spray on chrome door handles, even a pretty generic looking taillight assembly with hordes of plastic throughout. So sadly you think a vehicle that's this simple, this basic and this low rent would hopefully at least save you on maintenance. But the sad part is, no it doesn't. Because along with its other brothers, the Caravan Grand Caravan, the transmissions let go on these and the transmission ultimately lands into a failure mode. The worst part is any of these, the journey, the caravans, when you lose a transmission which can cost you three to four thousand dollars, you've essentially written the vehicle off if this thing's more than about three or four years of age. So the next one on my list with an absolutely horrendous transmission is this vehicle right behind us and it's the Nissan Pathfinder. Do you remember many moons ago the Pathfinder was more truck like. It was following the footsteps of the Toyota 4Runner which currently is still a body on frame design and very truck like. Unfortunately the Pathfinder has veered off another direction and it's gone more light duty if not slightly like a minivan. And there's a Nissan Pathfinder. It satisfies the needs of a lot of drivers. For example you've got sunroof action, very interesting door handles chrome accents which make it just look pop some fancy wheels skirting around you've got these pretty cool rounded taillights if not slightly bland of course it's four-wheel drive in the sl model and you can even tow some weight you can pull a small boat or a small trailer and this vehicle even has some of the luxury amenities you've got leather interior full-on infotainment system and a lot of other amenities just to keep it comfortable what about the extra chrome on the front here a pretty bull truck like grill but sadly, that's where some of the positives end because the transmission in these is a horrific design. It's a CVT, which is a constantly variable transmission. And that essentially works on a series of pulleys and a belt. CVTs were designed because they're cheap, easy to manufacture, they provide better fuel economy, and in most cases, they're relatively quiet. But sadly, with some of these transmissions in this Nissan Pathfinder, there's lots of cases where they fail. Boom! For example, shuttering, poor acceleration because it's not in doing what it's supposed to do, belt snapping in as little as 5,000 miles, overheating and catastrophic failure even when just driving down the highway minding their own business. Sadly the 2014 Pathfinder and many other brands with the CVT transmission suffer a similar fate and this is one best steering away from. 
So the next car is this little blue beauty right behind me and it's the 2016 Ford Focus. These cars were intended to be a very affordable car, a great runabout, very economical. In some cases, they even have nice dressed up wheels, sunroof, leather interior, funky little soft touch, and a sporty little wing in some cases. But that's not the problem with these vehicles. The problem with these vehicles isn't the low cost of production or even the relatively moderate build quality, it's actually the DCT transmission, the power shift gearbox that's located inside these cars. Many customers have reported shuddering, juddering, lurching, sudden acceleration, delayed acceleration, outright hesitation, first to second gear aggressiveness, and unfortunately, as about 1.1 million customers re-experienced, outright failure. That's right, these cars failed. There's a class action lawsuit for that vintage and that generation with the power shift gearbox. And this Ford Focus is honestly one of the vehicles that hits the list of the worst transmissions ever in a road car. And here's the next vehicle on my list. It's a great little German sedan and it's called the Volkswagen Jetta. There's a significant problem with some of the transmissions in these cars. The Volkswagens have always been known and renowned for longevity and unfortunately, this modern 2018 to 2019 Jetta doesn't follow in the footsteps of the old Volkswagen Beetle, which you still find driving around these days. These modern day cars are over complex, over engineered and under designed and unfortunately, the transmissions in these no longer hold up. You'll find poor drivability issues from stuttering and stammering and delay delayed acceleration as well as leaks often associated with the torque converter. Now when new this 8-speed gearbox generally does a great job of moving this vehicle along and for the first little bit it feels like a luxury car. I mean you've got sunroof, somewhat basic looking handles, alloy wheels, LED taillights and there we have the infamous Volkswagen logo and in this one we have the two and a half liter engine. And if you look along, it looks an awful lot look like an Audi. And that's because it's largely is an Audi as well. But did you realize the transmission in these vehicles up to 80% failure rate exists on them? That's right. Over three quarters of the vehicles that hit the road eventually sustain some sort of a transmission fault, which leaves customers in a lurch. The worst part is it almost always happens outside of warranty and it ends up costing you and me an arm and three and a half legs. The next vehicle on my list is the Venere, I mean ven venerable Honda Odyssey as we have right behind me here. As you can see, back in 1994, this came out with a four-speed transmission. They were sort of robust and people love them because you could haul about 150 people in there. Just kidding, not really. But you could in fact haul a whole fleet and family and friends and relatives all in one sitting because they're huge. They're long and large and in charge. As you can see by this vehicle here, been run hard put away wet you've got some rough rims but you've got this massive sliding door which allows all the kidlets to jump in and out this vehicle even has leather interior and all of the other amenities you need in a standard vehicle including a sunroof but nothing too fancy going on here this is pretty old school light system there the early generation of gloss black finishing on the grill and look it's even faded all to no end but it does have a ginormous roof rack to haul a couch on top or a few sheets of plywood and drywall. But there's nothing too slick on the back as you see it's pretty much a drop off and allows this tailgate to open with ease. Now as you and I know very well, Honda is known for the reputation. They've got a reputation in Formula One racing. They've got a reputation in durability, reliability. But unfortunately, every once in a while, there's a miss. Such as you see with these. The early generation came out in 94 originally as a four-speed auto. Then of course they bumped it up. And now in 99 is where they started seeing some of the problems with, with the new revised automatic transmission. 99 generation of vehicles had a strong reputation of unfortunate weak failures. From unintended shifting to delayed shifting to unintended acceleration to delayed shifting as in you put your foot down and all of a sudden wham and then it goes. And often what ends up happening is this vehicle starts to slip, miss, 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 to one day all of a sudden, it stops shifting altogether. Second gear breaks, third gear overheats and fails ultimately. And some people attested this five speed failure to a faulty bearing within the transmission that blows apart and leaves shrapnel throughout and ultimately causes an early demise of the remainder of the system. Now sadly, even though Honda is known for an, an absolute stellar level of reliability, this one is an absolute miss. Sorry Honda, but the Honda Odyssey just has that sloppy little gearbox. The next vehicle on our list is essentially the Karen wagon right here. And we're talking about the Ford Exploder, or I mean Explorer. There it is. 
And unfortunately, there's a lot of transmissions in the older generation. Now, what we have here is the newest one. Older generation units, transmission failures early, 25, 30,000 miles. Very early failure rates on these vehicles. Now, sure, police use them. They're used by a lot of public authorities, and they're popular because of the high volume, low cost to run, low cost to maintenance, low cost to buy. But unfortunately, all this versatility comes at a cost, and the cost is transmission failure rates. And unfortunately, what that means is costs in excess of four, five thousand dollars to sort out. And the next vehicle, possibly a vehicle I'd like to tell my old boss to go buy, but I definitely wouldn't give it to my mother because these vehicles are notoriously rotten. And here it is, the Kia Rio. Now these vehicles have been considered lemons for 15 years running, but let's first take a look. I mean, there are cool little accented lights here. You've got some great little alloy wheels and a basic little mirror assembly. And even the door handles are cuter than what you find on the Jetta. But they do come with a sunroof, which is nice. And this cutesy putsy little antenna here. Hub motor on the back, you circle around, and it's actually got a really cute little back end on it. Now here you've got a basic tail light, and there's your Kia. But everything is as you would expect it to be on a base entry level price point car. Even the interior is relatively cost effective. And what about this funky window here? That's probably got to cost a few extra dollars because this isn't really a standard style of glass. But sadly, it's all that low rent, low cost equipment. And it really is consistent with the quality of the car as well. And these vehicles are notoriously unreliable from timing belts, not rated as well as the modern day technology as well. The big one is the transmission, which Kia says 100,000 miles is the interval for oil service change on the tranny. But everyone is starting to realize that unless you do it at 50,000 miles, you're likely going to see a failure in the gearbox of these vehicles. Sadly, so close, but yet so far away. The Kia Rio. Now the next car on my list is what we have behind here, this yellow banana. Follows unfortunately the similar suit as the Volkswagen Jetta that we described earlier. And it's no longer built like a Sherman tank like the earlier Volkswagens are. But we'll get to that. Firstly, as you can see why people are buying the new Beetle, because it definitely has a retro look. They try to do duplicate the fenders, which is very cool. For sure you've got the retro headlights and the Volkswagen logo is big and bold on the front grill. Here you've got some chrome accents which makes it feel like quality and some more chrome that wraps around the rim there. Of course being a convertible it makes those sunny drives all that more desirable. Now this one here of course we have a wing on the back and pretty generic looking taillights but there's your big bold Volkswagen logo again. And the beauty is with these vehicles you have color matching dashboard and it's that automatic transmission, sadly, is the nemesis of this vehicle. Did you realize up to 20% of these vehicles that hit the road end up in some level of a transmission failure? Leaks, juddering, sputtering, hard downshifts, aggressive upshifts, slipping. And sadly enough, ultimately it yields a catastrophic failure, leaving this vehicle, boom, dead on the side of the road. On top of it, a toasted transmission, in today's German vehicles is not a cheap proposition, so you can expect to pay three, four, five thousand dollars to properly suit that and fix it up appropriately. And the next car with one of the worst transmissions ever in history is in this car here, and it's one of my own personal vehicles. It's the BMW E60 M5. And this M5 has two pipes, and it actually has four pipes. It has some pretty cool things like little wings. It has a little flare on the side to make it show that it's a little more meaty than some of the other basic mainstream 5 Series cars. Of course, you can see, you definitely know it's the real deal. And as you can see, this is the awesome V10 engine that makes 507 horsepower. These cars are phenomenal because the gearing of the transmission. But it's this very transmission that is actually one of the very worst. So it's not that the seven speed gearbox with automated paddle shifters isn't fun to drive. It's that it uses a standard clutch because it works almost essentially like a manual gearbox with an actuator that drives the gears. And so the clutches don't last long. They make, they maybe last 50, 60, 70,000 miles. The actuators fail, the SMG pumps fail, and the SMG transmission is inherently one of the worst anyway. In stock or standard format, when you turn the car on and drive, it is so lurchy and jumpy and bumpy that the car is almost undrivable. It's not until you finally crank up the transmission shift speed all the way up to max that it starts to feel like it should. Still doesn't even come close to the modern day dual clutch transmissions, but the fact of the matter is differentials break, clutches break, SMG pumps break, lots of different parts within that gearbox. This base transmission's solid, but all of the other parts around it just don't last the test of time, and that's why this truly is one of the more undrivable and least desirable transmissions in history.
So why drive it then, you say? Because that engine is just so epic and they will never build another one like it. That's why it's a keeper. And with all of that said, here's a list of 10 vehicles that will make it over 300,000 miles in case you care. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.